little kids. <laughs> That's right. We'll uh, be in Genesis chapter 7 in just a little bit. Just want to hit a couple verses there as we move forward. But I want to start off with a, with a praise tonight. Um, and, it's, and it's a little um, a lengthy word in case. But uh, one of those things that I just really want to share. I, uh, of course, have been working with, with you for a long time. And, uh, you know, the, the, whenever we went to church camp there in Arkansas, whenever we pulled up on the, pulled up on the campground, this, that, and other, and I got out, got out, and I looked at my wife, I said, you realize, I said, this is the first year that, that, that we've been here in, in about eight years, previous eight years, without certain children with us, and then children, you know, 13, 14 year olds, that, that go in with us year after year after year. And uh, and these these teenagers that you know you 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 work with them and do things with them um, every week for years and years and you get attached. Amen. And, um, and 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 I, and I love those kids and they know that and, and I've told them many times. But you know what I'm my concern for them is in where they're headed in the years ahead because okay their parents and uh, every one of those children that I'm specifically talking about uh, have very very bad home life uh, one particular family there are four children in that family and uh, two of those um, were regulars at church camp and, and uh, all four have been at one time but the dad he uh, he's in, in, in prison for, 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 for 90 something years I've been to uh, the different jails and different different places, different um, um, uh, counties in Arkansas to visit with him and share the gospel and talk with him. And and, um, and then the youngest, excuse me, the oldest son, he's been arrested twice within the last year. And you know that pattern is there. You know you, you see you, you see where this is headed. Well, that was the. The next oldest boy, his name's Harley. And Harley's the, the kind of kid that he, he's two different people. Whenever he's with, with, with me and, and we go places, I'll do all these other type things and I've taken him fishing quite a few times and the deer camp and all this. He's the perfect little boy. I mean, you know, you just want to take him home to myself. But you get around him, get around some other boy, and he's the instigator. He's the one that gets everybody in trouble. Okay. He's good at getting them in trouble and him looking like he's innocent. I've been called to the school, talk with teachers, principals, things of this nature. You know, whatever you can do to help a brother Kyle, we know you as a preacher. We got we 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 don't know what to do. So all this has been going on for years. And uh, and of course. You know, whenever you step away and leave somebody, they're still on your mind, still on your heart, and you're just thinking, man, what's going to happen to these kids now? So we pull up again on their church camp, and Gail and I talked for a few minutes, and I said, you know, it's, uh, so I, I just got Harley on my heart. And this is on Monday morning. I said, he's been on my heart for a couple of days, and I just can't stop thinking. About it. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is Monday morning. The service there at the camp starts about 7 o'clock, right around that time period. It was 6.10. I just looked down at my phone, and I had a missed phone call, and it was him. I said, well, it must have been a pocket dial or something. You know, he wouldn't call me and everything. We had text occasionally and said nothing, but it had been about two months since I talked to him. I thought, well, you know what? I, uh, I'm going to check so and make sure something could be wrong. So I went and got off by myself and I called him and uh, I said, Harley, did you try to call him? He said, I sure did. And I uh, just kind of got quiet. I'm thinking to myself, you know, I'll, I always think it works, okay? So I'm thinking, oh my, what's going to happen? He gets real quiet. He says, uh, Brother Kyle, he said, you've been my preacher for a long time. He said, I just thought I needed to call you to tell you how to say you yesterday. Yes, amen. Boy, I'm going to tell you something. I wouldn't take a million dollars. 
You know, the Bible, word God tells us that, that it's for us to know that our labor is not in vain. That his word, okay, will not return void where unto he sent it, Isaiah 55. And these things teach us about faithfulness unto God and doing our little part. I heard this described this week in a preacher up in Chicago, Illinois. I just kind of caught the tail end of this message, but he was talking about an assembly line. You know that, and I know you've, you've seen, you're familiar with that. You, you've probably seen them on TV and this and other documentaries and things of this nature where they build all kinds of stuff. But, but you know that first person on that assembly line, they just have one certain little job. And you know what? When they put their piece down there on that thing, it don't look like anything. And then they turn around and they do it again. And then that part goes to the next person. That next person adds to it, of course, and so on and so forth. But if the first person on the assembly line hadn't put his piece of equipment, or whatever the case may be, his part on the assembly line, when it got to the sixth, seventh, and eighth, it wouldn't work. That's right. And then finally, the last person, you know, brings whatever machine it is and puts that last piece on, and there it is. And he gets all the credit. <laughs> But here's the bottom line. You know, the Lord God talks about one soul, one water, God giving the increase. And as teachers, as, as a child of God, as we encourage people and we share Christ with, with people and different things, are, are just, you know, we may not have it two seconds right. with them, but just in God, to, how in the world can you do any good in two seconds? If you do what God tells you to do in that two seconds, he'll take care of it. Amen. But God is going to bless those things. But I, I, you know, I, I'm worrying about these kids. If somebody in his family had invited him to go to a church with them, okay, way off out in the country, they had to have no other teenagers there. But you know what? That was the place where God got a hold of his heart. Yeah, amen. And we just need to be faithful and do our part. But I just want to praise God tonight save the heart and soul and, and uh, you know that, those type things are huge huge encouragement yes. to me I just thought I'd share that with you yes. in Genesis chapter 7 just a couple read a couple verses before we move forward here uh, we spent some time here last week verse 7 chapter 1 excuse me chapter 7 verse 1 says the Lord said unto Noah come thou and all thy house into the ark for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation so then we get the instructions about the animals and and, uh, and everything forward from here. Verse number seven says, And Noah went in. Okay, God told him, it says, Come thou and all the house. Verse seven, they went in, and his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. We move to verse number 16. It says, And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him. Then we see this phrase. And the Lord shut him in. Okay. And there's a word, there's a reason why that word him, why is it, that we know that the rest of them there were with him. Okay. But God's talking about Noah here. We'll, we'll, we'll look at all that later. So let's move forward. We, at this point, the rain has started, the fountains of the deep have, have, have again are, 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 are convulsing, erupting up, all this type thing. Um, and, and everything, the rain has started. And uh, and so we move forward now uh, in, in to, I'm just going to start reading in verse number 21. Same chapter, verse chapter 7. It says, And all flesh died, but just as God said it would, right? And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle, okay? and of beasts, of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, and every man. Again, it's outside of that all. All of whose nostrils was the breath of life, of all that was in dry land died. Now, you might look at verse number 22 and you think, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life. You think, that, that, that's kind of an odd description. It's an odd description. But we need to think about what God is actually saying here. We're not going to turn back, but if we were to turn back to when God formed from the dust of the earth. 
The Bible says that what? He breathed into his mouth the breath of life. He breathed into it. Our very lives, the very breath that we draw, okay, belongs to God Almighty. Amen. Every single breath belongs to him. We are alive because he brought us to life. Amen. We owe him everything. And what we're seeing here in verse number 22 is it's actually a description of everyone that had refused to give God glory for their lives or refused to recognize God as their authority and all these things. So we see here, verse 23, it says, And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and the cattle and creeping things. So we move through there. So let's go down to chapter 8. Chapter 8. It says, And God remembered Noah. And there we are again with another English word. And in our mind, you know, we, we immediately go to, well, God wasn't going to forget about it. Okay? That has nothing to do with what that word actually means. But what the word actually means here is, is, is it's, a, it's, a, it's a descriptive word of somebody under God's specific protection. Amen. Specific protection. When God saw Noah's faith, and when God told him to prepare an ark, and to go in, or to come in, actually, excuse me, and then he said God shut him in, okay? Again, that's God's special protecting hand. And we'll look, about that, look, about, look at that more in just a bit. It says, And God remembered Noah and every living thing and, 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 and all the cattle here, again, again, just a word for animals, that was with him in the ark. <coughs> then we see this right here. It says, And God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters assuaged. Assuaged, okay? This assuage means they begin the drainage started. This word wind here is, uh, in, in my Bible, is, 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 is written by, um, is edited by a hydrologist, a PhD in, 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 in water and its effect on services and all these other type things. And I've got a couple other books by him. I think I mentioned it last week. It's one of those things you, just, you can't even hardly read it. It just, your head, you know, headache. But he talks about this, this, this word here, wind. God made or preparing a wind. Right? And, 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 and again, speaking of, of, of how God used that in that moment. But this word here, assuage, speaks of uh, rapid drainage. Um, how many of you have, have, have been to uh, the Grand Canyon? We went several years ago, and, and I knew it was big. And you hear people talk about, well, you know, it's, it's just a big hole in the ground. You know, some people see things and they just don't appreciate it. Amen. And so, so I walk up to it, to the rail there, and I already knew it was big, but it was way bigger than I thought it was. Amen. And it struck me just boom. I was so in awe of what I was seeing. You can look across again, depending on the shadows of the sun, sun direction, all these other things, you can see the layers of the substance. Mm -hmm. All these things. Now, that's not the only place on earth. You got Solomon. I saw him just a few weeks ago when we floated down the okay, Buffalo River. Or any river system along there where there's rock, you see the different layers. And as these waters assuaged, as this rapid water flow took place again carving out and laying down these layers okay um i've heard heard two or three different experts in this type thing as far as sediments and then all of a sudden they talk about that the, the, the grand canyon could could literally have been formed in less than two weeks in less than two weeks now again that, that, that's not important whether it was 10 days or two months the bottom line was is that because of water drainage. And we see these type of things all around the world. And so we here we, here we have this starting, where this water is starting now to 
come down. Uh, verse 2 says, And the fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained, and the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of the 150 days, the waters were abated, and it was continued to decrease. Verse 4 says, And the ark rested in the seventh month, on the 17th day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat. Now, we saw previously, previously a reference to the, to the, to the month that it started and all these other type things, and we, we spoke of that last week. And again, you know, those that were, that were on, the, uh, on the ark, um, don't you know that they would have kept some kind of record themselves? You know, I don't know if they had a piece of chalk and marked on the side of them, day one, day two, day three, all these other type things. But again, again, the mountains of Ararat. Now, this mountains of Ararat is, a, is actually a mountain range over 100 miles long. There's two or three different places in that range where it's over 17,000 feet high. Verse 5 says, And the waters decreased continually until the 10th month. And in the 10th month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains seen. And it came to pass at the end of the 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made, and he sent forth a raven, which went to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the ocean. Now we notice that the raven didn't come back. And the raven, you know, again, is similar to a crow. Right? But again, they are carrying either, they can eat anything. Okay? They can survive on floating stuff, all those other type things. Okay? Don't nobody get worried about the raven. He fared just fine, okay? There would have been lots of dead stuff for him to feed on. Um, and so we continue on reading. Verse 8 says, And he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the place of the ground. You know, there's a lot of difference between a dove and a crow. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand, and he took her and pulled her in unto him into the ark. And he stayed yet other seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came in to him in the evening. In the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So no one knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. And he stayed yet other seven days and sent forth the dove, which returned not again from unto him any more. And it came to pass in the 601st year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the seventh and twentieth day of the month, was the earth dry. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee of all flesh, both the fowl and the cattle and of every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth, for which he did exactly as instructed, and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing, and every fire, whatsoever creepeth upon the earth, after their kind, went forth out of the ark. Verse 20 says, And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fire, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. Now this, this phrase here we'll, we'll get into much more as we get into the book of Leviticus. And, and look, at, look at this here. And, and the meaning here again is this, as the sacrifices are given symbolically and, and, and figuratively, but also there's a, there's a smoke that arises. And we'll, we'll look at this as we, as we look into the tabernacle in the wilderness later. But the reference here is, is to the reception of the altar of God receiving this offering here that Noah has given for his family. 
And we look at this and we, we say, well, you smell the sweet savor. That means everything's okay. Well, it means way a whole lot more than that. And we already, we already know this about Noah before we ever get to this verse. Again, the, the, the faithfulness of the family is due to the patriarchal leadership of Noah. Okay. We're going to look at something here in just a little bit in the book of, book of, uh, book of Hebrews. But this passage here where it talks about smelling a sweet savor, for the last 370, 371 days, whatever, that they were in the ark, this verse here, this passage teaches us, shows us, it's a stamp that what? That Noah had never faltered, not one time. Amen. Not one time. He says, I will not again, this is what he said, he says, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. Now he's not here at this point, he's not saying that man is going to be fine, which we know that they're not. Okay? And he said, he's, he says, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more living thing as I have done. Or by the water, we'll get to that later. While the earth remaineth, seek, now watch what happens in verse 22. First time this language appears in, in, in the word. Now, while the earth remaineth, which would mean right now, on this day in 2022. Yeah. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest and cold and heat. And summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. So here we have an emphasis on the seasons that will continue until he stops on them. Okay? Okay. Now I want to look at just a couple of things here um, tonight as we've read through this passage, uh, mainly without a lot of comment and going all the way through. It's just it's kind of self-explanatory. But there's some things here that, that, that we see. I'm going to go back here to just thinking about, first of all, about the animals. You know, God told him to take unto the ark, okay, male and female, okay, of each, of each animal of each kind. Okay. And so we just, you know, said something last week about the animals beginning to come, and they came back. Okay. God brought the animals back. I heard, I heard something else this week that, that, uh, that, that kind of put a, a little exclamation point on this. You know, these animals right, that came, okay, they were what? This was an act of an obedience unto their creator. Unto their creator. They didn't just wander around and, hey, you know, there's some more animals. Let's just kind of go that way. No, God sent each one, male and female. I'm sure that, that in, in your memory, going way back years and years, you've seen pictures. Okay, you know, you know partial, partially of Adam and Eve as they were there, and then the animals walking by two and two, you know, going up the steps. Okay, and, uh, and, and, and that's, that's partially how it took place. But God bought them there, each and every one. Because what? Because they're under God's command. As creator, there's never a time that he is not, shall we say, uh, God over all creation. He never relinquishes that whatsoever. In the passage in the New Testament where it talks about Jesus riding into Jerusalem, okay, on that donkey that had never been ridden. And you look, you see people list all the different miracles of Christ, and they always leave that one out. Anybody of you ever tried to ride, ride a, a horse or a colt or a donkey, anything that had never been ridden, never been broken? You ain't gonna stay on it. And that goes for a big old lower hall, too. I've been there. You know what? I guarantee you, whenever, whenever Christ went to climb up on that donkey, that was not the first time. It was in complete submission. Mm -hmm. Complete submission. He said, Look, what, what's, what's the big deal about all this? Why are we talking about a donkey? Because we want to fight back to what God tells us to do. We want to make a decision in our own heart whether I want to do it or not. Whether I agree with it, you know all these other type things. Well, I, you know this, you know God, I just can't call, listen. You know what our job is as His child is just do it. That's right. Just do it. 
Don't complain about it. Don't call other folks up and, and talk about it and say, look, we, 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 we don't like this. No. Just do it. Submission. Our lives as a child of God. And again, we can all say it. I know that we're supposed to do that. Well, there has to be a point where we reach where we start actually doing it. We're not going to get by with when we stand before God. If the, if the beam of seat was saying unto him, I knew I should have done those things, but I didn't do them. Yeah. Do them. Do them. That's a witness unto his greatness. Unto him is king when we surrender unto him. Um, we saw this. We saw this. We um, talked about this just briefly last time. But God, of course, because they prepared an ark, and God shut them in. Okay. And we'll talk about this in just a minute as we move forward here. You know, good and well, okay, that people in the areas of, it didn't matter if the high ground was only that high. Okay. When the water started, everybody headed to the high ground. Whenever there was mountains to climb, people were fleeing and heading the mountains and trying to climb, get free wherever they could to get higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. And higher. Okay? But there was only one safe place. That's right. And the safe place is always going to be, always going to be where God tells us we need to be. That's right. Okay. And here we're talking about an ark. We've talked about the book of Daniel. We've talked about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Again, in the fiery furnace, that's the safest place they could have been. Okay. But it comes down to this. In being in God's will and being, shall we say, sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit in our lives and following and doing exactly what he commands us to do, sometimes, you know what? It can get a little rocky. And circumstances can look bad. But if we're doing exactly what he wants us to do, if we are exactly where he wants us to be, that doesn't mean we might not come to harm. He may allow that. But there's no other safe place that we can be. Amen. And this ark was the safest place. The last part that we just read here before we finish this chapter, God sent out the raven and then he sent out the dove. You know what? That dove had enough sense. I'm going back to the ark. We're back to, at this point, his creation in this sense. I know we're safe to do that. Yes. I know we're safe to do let me say this for just a minute. There's, there's times when, when you know, and, and, and people over the years have, have, have said this to me, and, and, and I'm sure that this, you know, you felt this way at times. When you, when you hear somebody describing something that, that seems, in other words, in the, in the, in the natural sense, and, 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 and it's a situation, whatever the case may be, but you're seeing it from a spiritual sense. And you're thinking, I just can't figure out how they can't see it. It's right there before their very eyes. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's right there before your very eyes because God is his word, you and his Holy Spirit to shine upon this object, this situation, that spiritual life. And you have that understanding. Listen. God's people, God's house is a place of refuge. Amen? Amen. Why? Not just because we can get inside a building, but why? Because we can be fed by the Word of God to be strengthened to face the things that we're going to face in the coming week. Amen. In a sense, okay, we're in the ark, we're in Jesus Christ in salvation, but with his people, that's where we are now during this church age. That's what God has, has, has uh, deemed uh, for us is, is to, to be our authority is in the local uh, New Testament church, okay? And encouraging one another, and praying for one another, and being fed, and in service, all these things. And to a Christian, we see this, we, well, yeah, we're supposed to be that. But I'm sure there may be somebody, even on your heart, or somebody that you know, whatever, that, that maybe you've talked with, that you've asked them to come, all you're talking about. And you're thinking, how can they not figure it out? I just point back to this guy. Fluttering around, going around the mountainside, finally found that olive leaf. And you know what? <laughs> Good state. But again, subject to God's creation, God sent that dove back to that place of refuge. We'll talk about this for just a minute. 
on the ark from the time of going in the door to coming out about 371 days. Let me ask you this question. <clears throat> now, Brother Daniel, I figure me and you probably are like in this. If it had been me, I'd had sacks full of spam. If I had made baby wings, I'd had all that stuff. I'd had my corner piled up over. Hey, Japheth, whoa, you getting over there in my stuff? What was I with it? You know what? God provided for them. How many meals do you reckon they might miss in those days? Not a one. They never missed a meal. God provided for them. God took care of them. Think about that first day. The door shut. Of course, all the animal noises, all this type of thing. The fountains of the deep suddenly again starts erupting. The rain, like it's, you know, well, I start, it's never rained before, but it had. But all of that, and all of a sudden that boat tossing to and fro. I wonder. Again, we're talking about human nature here. I guarantee you that there were certain ones out of the eight that were fearful at the beginning. But you know what? We got through day number one, we're on day two. It's the same. Everything's just as bad. Fearful. But at some point, at some point during that first five month period, specifically, at some point, somebody, one, two, three, all of them, you know what? God took care of us day one. That's right. God took care of us day two. We're tossing around today just like we was yesterday, but we're not with her. That's right. We have nothing wrong with us whatsoever. God's taking care of us all the way through this. You know what? That's the same way it is in this life that we live right now. Amen. Now, I'm going to give y'all a little insight into me. I have, I have more than one week. But I, and I told you before, sometimes I like to work. Okay. And sometimes I don't learn real fast. Amen. But you know what? Inevitably, Brother Glenn, it may be day 10, day 20, day 30, day 40. <laughs> At some point, I'm going to shake myself. How? <clears throat> Would you just get still a minute? You've been through stuff like this before, over and over and over and over, and you've worried about them every time. But guess what? God will take care of you every single time. Amen. And I have to remind myself of those things. Okay? Safest place I can be. Be where God wants me to be. And yes, we're going to go through trials in our life to prepare us for the next one, to prepare us in the way that we live our lives in front of other people. I'm not doing other folks any good whatsoever if they see me worry and panicking. Amen. Now, let me ask you this. What's the difference between promise that God made to Noah okay, speaking with a voice from heaven, speaking with a voice. What's the difference between the, 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 the a promise that God made to him that way and the one that he makes to you and I through his word? Not a bit. It's just as sure. It's just as sure. We can count on him. I don't know how many times in my life in going through situations, in, in, in through whatever the case may be, that I've quoted, okay, I'm not, I'm not quoting it to God to remember him, I'm quoting it to God to, to Kyle so that I remember, I'll never leave you for Satan. Amen. I'll never leave you for Satan. I'll never leave you for Satan. Hear back about 
this was in the 90s. Um, I was, I, I can't even remember where I was exactly, but I was, I was at some work, some podium, swimming podium. And we might have been on vacation or whatever the case might be. But what I remember, the most important part I do remember, and it's a dad and a little boy. And the dad was in the water. And the little boy is standing on the edge. And the dad is trying to get him to jump into his arms. Trying to get him to jump in his arms. And the little boy gets so, so close that he back off and he shakes his head. No, I can't, I can't do it, I can't do it. And you know, the little boy, he's just, you know, maybe three years old. Three or four, I don't know. And that dad stops and he looked at his son in his eyes and he said, no matter what. He said, son, no matter what, I promise you, I'm going to be right here and I'm going to catch you. Amen. You know what that boy did? There wasn't no more, I ain't going to do it. He just walked up there and he jumped into his daddy's arms. Amen. I've never forgotten that. But let me tell you something. That boy, that little boy felt safe in his dad's arms. Yes. He felt safe. At the point where he decided, okay, we can use the word faith in that sense. He had faith that his dad was going to catch him. But you know what? Our Heavenly Father as good a job as that daddy did right there, our Heavenly Father is more reliable than that daddy was. Amen. Because there's absolutely nothing that can happen <coughs> that can distract God away what he's going to do in taking care of us and guiding us through and protecting us and watching through nothing. There's absolutely nothing. I'll never let go of Savior. Father, we thank you, Lord, for loving us. Lord God, I pray, Lord, that as we read and as we study your Dear God, that you feed our souls. Dear God, that the enemy, our adversary the devil, dear God, that you defeat him, Lord, through the power of your word. And God, that you protect us, Lord, watch over us. Give us, give us wisdom, Father God, in speaking to others in things that you would have us say as you burden our heart for other people. God, I pray that you prepare them, prepare their hearts, before we even go through it. God, I just pray, Lord, tonight, Lord, for the rest of this week, God, take care of us, watch over us, bring us back to your house this Sunday. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, all